and welcome to another Sarah National Session. My name is Jenny Anchando and I'm here as your host and moderator today. So what we do each and every week is we try to educate you, we try to inform you, we try to uplift you and really just give you tools to be empowered in whatever it is that you're doing out there in the world. And this is actually part two of an incredible speaker that we had last week. So I'm gonna get into that in just a minute and let you know who we have here today. And if you were not here for last week's, it's totally okay. What you'll hear today will still be incredibly valuable. Topic today, by the way, is build your personal brand, grow your business. And I think this is such a good one because many of us know what business we wanna do, but figuring out the personal brand can be quite complex. It takes an expert and we do have an expert here today in Tarsha Hearns. So she is an MB, has an MBA. She's a nonprofit leader, a seasoned entrepreneur with a true passion for supporting small businesses. So if you were here last week, you were able to experience that passion and see firsthand what she really brings to the table. So what she does in her professional role right now is she's the senior director of ecosystems at the Debt Network, which is this 501c3 that helps entrepreneurs to launch and grow their ventures and their businesses. So it happens to be based in the Metroplex, which I also happen to be based um, in North Texas, but I know many of you will be watching from all over the country and I can just say, that what she's sharing is valuable regardless of where you are. So this is gonna be an excellent speech today. I mean, I could go on and on about her expertise, but she has a robust presentation today. I don't wanna take anything away from that. And for now, I will mute myself and Tarsha, you can take it away. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for having me back. I always love uh, coming to Sarah National, doing these webinars and sharing some knowledge with the audience and hopefully those of you who are listening listening will be able to take away some great tips and information um let me well she's already given my bio and talked about the deck network so how about i start with what you're going to learn today uh we're going to really talk about what personal branding is and by the time you leave this session you would have identified at least one brand attribute that you can start building your business around, your, your services around. Um, I'm gonna share what's the difference between building a brand and becoming a uh, influencer, a uh, marketing influencer. Then we'll, I'll give you some tips on how to use um, AI, artificial intelligence to help build your brand. And of course, I always love giving out free resources. So make sure you stay until the end because the resource that I'm going to talk about at the end is actually how you could apply for a $10,000 grant for your small business. But you got to stay towards the end to find that out. So let's just talk about uh, what personal branding is. It's been around for ages. And actually, a man named Tom Peters. Um, who wrote for Fast um, Company uh, magazine, came up with really the term personal branding when he created this quote. He said that we, um, all of us, need to understand the importance of branding. We are our own CEOs of our own companies, me, Inc. To be in business today, our most important job is to be head marketer of the brand called you. And that rings so true today. Even though he said that back in the early 90s, it is very relevant today. Because if you think about how brands are built, it's really built around the individual. And we'll get, more, get into that a little bit more uh, during the webinar. So let's break this down. So this is the time for you to pull out your digital notepad or your traditional notepad and start taking some notes. But if you think about personal brands, it's all about how you are actually perceived. And it's also about what makes you unique, your unique attributes that help you to stand out. Now, many of you are like, well, you know, I don't know what's so unique about me. The same competitor is doing this and saying that. Well, if you weren't unique, you wouldn't have a unique thumbprint. So you actually are unique. It's up to you to figure out what are those attributes that really keep you top of mind and help you to stand out. 
It also involves communicating what you believe in, what your values are, what your goals and beliefs, and maybe even your purpose, what your why is. All of these things make up this brand called you. So again, it's about your skills, your beliefs, your unique attributes, how you stand out from the, the crowd, your values, and also how people perceive you. So let's talk about building this brand around you and some of those attributes you should start thinking about. Now, I always like to do this quick assessment. I typically do this for myself once a year. And what I do is I send out a little quick email survey to 10 of my closest friends and colleagues, uh, peers, people who they may not, they don't have to be my best friends or family members, but they've interacted with me. They've engaged with me because if, if personal branding is about how you're perceived, then I want to know how does the world perceive Tarsha Hearns? And so what I do is I send out this survey and I ask my closest friends to pick out attributes that they feel best describe me. And I encourage you to do the same thing. You will be surprised at the responses that you get back. So let me just use me as an example. You know, I sent out a survey or an email to 10 of my closest friends and I said, if I were a car, what type of car would I be? And, and then I asked them to describe the attributes of that particular car and why they chose that car if I were that type of car. Then I asked myself, well, Tarsha, if you were a car, what kind of car you, would you be? So I said to myself, I would be a Honda Accord, maybe because that's what I was driving at the time. But I chose a Honda Accord because Hondas are reliable. They're long lasting, they're dependable. You know, they're not super fancy, um, but they're very affordable. And so that felt like that's who I am as a person. And those are some of the attributes that I felt built, made up my personal brand. But when I started to get those responses back from my friends, you would not believe the type of car they thought I would be. One, uh, the most common car I got was a Lexus. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to upgrade my car, first of all. <laughs> because, so, the, so in other words, although I see myself as a Honda, right? The way I was showing up in the world was more like a luxury vehicle, more like a Lexus. So again, it's all about how you are perceived. So on the screen here, you see some attributes. There's tons of attributes out there. This is not the, the whole list, but just look through these attributes. Are you ambitious? Are you a bold, carefree person, humorous, or are you introverted? So pick out some of these attributes that you think you are, and then Ask your, your friends, ask your colleagues to see if they align. If they align, great. Uh, you, if, and if they're aligned, great. But if they're positive, continue with that. But if the attributes come up as negative and that's not how you want to show up in the world, you may want to start, um, you know, increasing more of the positive attributes and downplaying the negative attributes. So take a moment, look at the screen, write down some of these attributes that you think you are. Then you make a list of your 10 closest friends and colleagues, send them a quick email, ask them, you know, if you were a car, what would you be? And ask them to describe the attributes of that car. And then ask them why and see what happens because Next, you want to build your personal brand around those attributes. So if you think about a Lexus, Lexus, you know, they are actually reliable and dependable cars, but they're also considered in more of a luxury class. So once I got that feedback, I upgraded my website. 
Um, I even hired a um, wardrobe consultant because if I thought I was a Honda Accord, that means I was dressing like a Honda Accord. I, my website looked, it wasn't a bad website, but it just didn't look the luxury that the world saw me. So I had to make sure that I leveled up to my personal brand and made sure my marketing and everything was centered around those attributes that best describe my brand. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Um, we'll have a, a moment for a Q&A, so feel free to jot your questions down and be ready to put that in. I know sometimes it's hard to look at yourself and say, well, I, I can't figure out what my personal brand is or what those attributes are. So I want to kind of share with you some corporate brands that you probably are aware of and how we look at the brand attributes of them. I like to start with Southwest. Uh, Herb Keller, the founder and former CEO of Southwest. Uh, if you've ever read his book, you'll read and know that he was a fun-loving prankster. He loved to have fun. He used to play jokes and pranks, but he also loved people. So listen to the key word I'm saying, love, right? If the person, Herb Keller, loved people, he loved playing pranks, he loved having fun. If you've ever flown Southwest Airlines, you actually have experienced the personal brand of Herb Keller. You see the heart in the Southwest logo. That was very intentional because that's what was important to that founder, Herb Keller, love. The color red symbolizes love. Uh, he was also, and if you've ever flown Southwest, you know they say these funny things on the intercom, right? They're different from some of the other airlines. They like to have fun. They sometimes play little pranks and jokes at the um, gate. So he was able to incorporate a lot of his personal brand attributes into his company brand. So let's look at Southwest. It's a very social, outgoing, and people-oriented brand. So when you're thinking about your company and your personal brand, how much of your attributes are actually in your corporate brand? So Southwest's personality is friendly, it's laid back, it's caring, its brand colors communicate trust, the brand colors communicate energy, friendly lit friendliness and loyalty. So as you can see, it really does start with the person. And once you figure out what your brand attributes are, then you can start looking at the colors. So if you are a person who have vibrant energy, do not use the dark colors like grays or black, right? Because that doesn't align with your personal brand. You want to use vibrant colors the reds, the yellows, the greens, the oranges, right? So now let's look at a brand that's the opposite, which is more of a corporate upscale type of brand, Weston. It's very focused on status and stature, but lots of business travelers, professionals, right? Their brand focuses on success and competence in their marketing messages. So when you look at the Hotel Westin, if you've ever stayed at that chain, it is an upscale brand. Um, and its personality is more glamorous, graceful, sleek, and its brand colors communicate high end. So just to recap that section again, ask your 10 friends, if you were a car, what kind of car would you be? or jot down some key attributes, see if they align. If they do not align, you have to make some tweaks. You have to make some adjustments, not only adjustments in your how you show up, but how your company brand, the colors, the messages, um, the design, the look and feel, all of those have to align with your personal brand attributes. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, you know, I have a 
following on TikTok. I have a following on Instagram. I am a personal brand. Well, you know, you are more of an influencer, especially if you're doing that to get paid. So influencer marketing can be an actual tactic used in the broader strategy of building a personal brand, right? So I follow a lot of influencers because sometimes they're entertaining and yes, they do influence me often to use certain products, uh, purchase certain things. But at the end of the day, the difference between an influencer and a personal brand is that the uh, the personal brand is all about a strategy to promote the individual's unique identity and expertise. Whereas an influencer, they their strategy is actually to pro promote a brand or a product or service by leveraging their personal brand with um, significant followers. A personal brand is focusing on your values, your actual skills, right? Your personality or even some of your achievements. But an influencer is all about leveraging online presence. They're all about getting endorsements or endorsing products and services. Whereas a personal brand, you're not only leveraging online, but you're leveraging your offline presence as well. Influencers, it's about how many people that you can reach and influence. Whereas personal brand, it's all about different, differentiating yourself from others. And then finally, influencers are actually paid by the brand. Uh, that they represent or endorse. And a personal brand typically is trying to get customers, right, to pay them for a product or service. So either way, you can use influencer marketing to build your personal brand. And I'm just gonna pause. Are there any questions or should I keep on going? So far, so good. You are rocking it. But but yes, by all means, take take time to get a sip of water. I need it. Yeah, I needed to pause to take a drink of water. Exactly. You you um, work with your Lexus self. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about now that you have an idea of what a personal brand is, that so you understand how to come up with some attributes to describe your personal brand and the difference between an influencer, let's look at how you actually market and communicate that brand to the world. It all starts with telling your brand story. What is your why? You know, when I was in my mid thirties, you know, I was still trying to figure early thirties. I was still trying to figure things out. What kind of career, what was I going to do with my business? I had literally had just started my business and all of those things and still just trying to figure things out. By the time I got to my mid thirties, one day I woke up and I was like, aha, <laughs> I know what my purpose is. And literally, my purpose is to inspire people to live their dreams through entrepreneurship. And once I knew my why, I could start aligning. It's about alignment, right? My marketing messages, my um, how I relate to the customers. So part of your story is, how did you get there? Maybe you've been there and done that. And if you have, be vulnerable enough to share your story, to share your journey around your brand and why you're doing what you're doing. Tell how your products or service is going to make the customer the hero. Remember, um, although you're building a personal brand and the personal brand is about you, at the end of the day, you want clients and customers. So you have to be able to say, um, you know, my consulting services will help you become a better manager. My uh, lawn care services will make your yard look, you know, greener and all your neighbors will be envy you, right? So now you are making the customer the hero and making that customer look good all while talking about your products and services. 
And also part of your brand story is you have to explain what your customer needs to do in order to experience a better outcome with your product. So again, uh, if it is a consulting business that's going to make them a better manager, what they need to do is possibly get coaching, get mentoring. What they need to do is sign up with you, uh, sign up with you or follow you on your social platforms or your newsletter. So this is you encouraging your customer with your brand story, but also engaging them, making it about them and keeping engaging them by telling them, here are the things you need to do to continue to experience a better outcome with my personal brand. Now, it's a lot to maintain a personal brand. It's just, it's a lot to maintain any kind of brand, but thank goodness we have artificial intelligence. So I took it upon myself to ask chat GPT. I knew that I was doing this webinar and I was just curious and I, I knew a lot of this stuff. Not, I'm not, I'm not cheating. I did know all this stuff, most all this stuff, but I was just curious because I wanted to know what ChatGPT said about how could we use artificial intelligence to scale our personal brand. So it came back with this list. So this is a great list for you to, uh, I know this is recorded, but feel free to make a screenshot. Um, I don't know about you, but it is hard to keep up with my calendar, my schedule, uh, the emails, all the different things I have going on and being able to check off my list. So in order for you to be able to show up and be present, you might need a personal, a digital personal assistant. And these AI tools will help you organize your calendar. Um, Motion and Magic are two of the tools that will help you um, from a digital perspective be more organized so that your brand can show up in a more professional and organized way. Hey, you're trying to build a, a personal brand. You need to put content out there. If you're not a writer or you struggle with coming up with catchy messages, content creation using ChatGPT is a lifesaver. My recommendation, don't copy it verbatim but use that as a guide for you to get the creativity flowing and for you to use um, to craft your own messages. But the content you wanna create to build your personal brand is thought leadership articles. If you remember on the previous slide when I compared a personal brand versus a, an influencer, uh, one of the difference with personal brand is that it's all about your expertise. You are trying to show up in the world as the expert, as the brand who is top of mind, that is credible. And so you may want to create blog posts, articles, or um, videos, but around your expertise. Uh, you can use ChatGPT for social media posts. I love using it for those catchy little fun social media um, messages. Uh, so use it for that. And of course, video content. Uh, if you're not using a social media management tool that has AI capabilities, here are a list of them that you can use. What I like about AI technology it is once you start using it and it um, starts to um, get to know your brand, your messaging, it starts to recommend content. If, I don't know if you've noticed, but even on Facebook now, it has this, um, Facebook and LinkedIn, both have, both have a feature where you can say, ask AI, and, and AI will look at the post and give you recommendations on content to respond um, to. I mean, technology is just like blowing my mind. This AI technology, it's, it's just amazing. And uh, videos, right? You're trying to build your brand. 
you want to use more video than you would want to use text, video and images, because we're, you know, on social media, you only ha actually have about two seconds to get somebody's attention and a bunch of copy or text is not going to do that, right? Um, but obviously, if you got to write an article or something like that, you definitely want to. But these tools here will actually help you create some very innovative and creative types of uh, video and image content. So make sure you, you look up some of these to help you build and manage your personal brand. So I want to talk about a couple of free resources. Actually, I think I'm, I'm wrapping up sooner than I thought because uh, I only have two more slides left. Uh, but I um, do want to share with you a couple of free programs and resources. Um, I talked about AI. Uh, Jenny mentioned I, I work for the DEC Network. Uh, we are going to this summer host a AI for Small Business workshop in our uh, South Oak Cliff location. We're located in at the shops at Redbird, um, the DEC Network at Redbird. And so this program is basically around empowering entrepreneurs with the digital skills needed to succeed in a modern business landscape. AI is taking over. It's not brand new. It's been around for a while, but it is definitely in being more incorporated into our daily lives. And so we want to be able to provide equitable access to AI technology. And the course is actually designed for those that are not technical and it's going to give you an overview of AI concepts, their applications, and implications for your business. Now, you can take your cell phone, open up your camera, scan that QR code to get on the email list so that you're notified when the class starts. Um, so again, AI for small business, a great opportunity for you to learn how do I incorporate artificial intelligence in my business or even everyday uh, life. And I told you if you waited to the end, which we are getting close to, uh, that I was going to share how you could sign up for um, a grant and possibly apply and receive a grant. So we have partnered with Verizon to create awareness about the Verizon um, small business readiness program. Um, it's really, really simple. You know, the, the grant is not guaranteed. It is first come, first serve, but there are a few things you need to do. First thing is first is scan the QR code. When you scan that QR code, you're taken to a page. And I think um, someone from Sarah is going to put the link in the chat. Um, and you can click on that link or you can scan the QR code. It, it's free. It's absolutely free. When you sign up, you're going to see on the on the page, there's various resources, lots of videos. You can actually sign up for coaching. You can sign up for mentoring. All of this is absolutely free. So the first step, scan a QR code, sign up. In order to qualify for the grant, you have to complete two of the courses that are on the site. Most of the courses are under an hour long. So complete the two courses and then you, you can apply to the grant, but you gotta apply before June 28th because that is the deadline. If you are selected, again, the $10,000 is not guaranteed. It is a grant. Others have to, others will apply to this too. And I think about 100 people will be selected for this grant. So it's very important that you sign up right away, get your application in, um, because then they'll notify those that will receive the grant. So absolutely free to attend, plus you get some benefits out of it, the educational content, the resources, and the access to the mentors. Jenny, I did not know that I was going to be finished in 30 minutes, <laughs> so I hope you all have a ton of questions. Um, if not, we are going to be finished early and you can get along with your day. But just to kind of recap um, what we said, what I talked about 
is, you know, you want to determine those personal brand attributes. It's all about personal branding is all about you, you you.com. And if you want to be of influencer, great, but that is just a strategy of personal brand. So think about what kind of personality, if you're going to be an influencer, what kind of personality or what are those attributes you want your followers to, to see? Uh, build your brand around your skills, your gifts, your talent, or even your story, and use those AI tools uh, to help you scale your personal brand. Well, any questions? Awesome, Tarsha. Thank you so much. Okay, with, with regard to the grant info you just posted there, do you know anybody who's gone through that process by chance or, or earned that particular grant, or is this a newer one? Um, I do not know anyone as of yet who actually received the grant. We just got notified about it like in mid April. Okay. And so we are just spreading the word, trying to get as many people signed up and connected to the resources. So um, I know the program has been around for at least two years with Verizon, but I personally do not know anyone. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. When people are looking at grants, I think that sometimes it's kind of they're, they're making the decision on, you know, you, there's there's a certain amount of time that we all have in the day. And, and I think people sometimes wonder, should I put my resources toward taking the time and applying for these grants or finding an investor or going to a bank or? It, that's, that's a hard decision um, because time is money. However, if you don't carve out the time to fundraise for your business and fundraise could be looking at grant opportunities and applying to them. Fundraising could be pitching your business to investors. Fundraising could be simply getting your business plan and financials together to present your financials to a banker. But at the end of the day, all of those things are not guaranteed, right? It's up to you to tell your financial story. It's up to you to tell your brand story. And honestly, it's up to you to commit the time. But I did share with you some AI tools that will help bring, you know, get you back some time. So sign up for one of those AI personal assistant tools that can maybe save you 10 to 20 minutes a day and those 10 or 20 minutes can add up to an hour of time that you can spend start researching grants, filling them out, and, and possibly um, obtaining them. Yeah, it's sort of like this cornucopia of opportunities, right? Like you have to just kind of figure it out, like, okay, where are we going to do this? And where are you going to sort of add up your time? Now, when it comes to you, you were touching on influencers and influencer marketing and, and the difference between doing that as a job versus hiring somebody we, in your experience from what you've seen have you seen small businesses have success when they hire influencers to market for them yes as a matter of fact um a few years ago i, I was working with this client she has um she sold her, she created her own brand of hair extensions. So I do want to preference this though. Beauty influencers are the bomb, right? <laughs> and, you know, we learn so much how to do our hair, how to put on makeup, <laughs> you know. Um, so, so this client, she had her own brand of hair extensions. And of course she had just launched it. So nobody knew her, her I mean, she had clients that she did their hair for with those extensions, but the general public didn't know her, they didn't know her brand. So she, I advised her to seek out a beauty influencer. And so we did some research, she found a couple of them. Um, I forget how much she paid, but she paid based on the number of um, impressions. She also provided uh, compensation in terms of free products and things like that. So yes, if you are looking to build your product or serve or brand that way using an influencer, you want to look at one, how much following do, do they, you know, can they really, um, I, I hate to say sale, but 
can they really sell or influence people to use your product, right? How, you know, what is, is, is their personality aligned with your brand? Those are some of the things you want to think about when you're looking at influencers to endorse your products. Right. And, and is, is there any sort of, it feels like, you know, traditional marketing or media buys, right? Like back in the day, or, you know, I've, I've, my career has been in TV. So it's like, if you're doing a media buy for TV, there's a certain set price, there's a certain industry, it's been around forever. Whereas with hiring influencers, it's, it's, you know, it's not new, but it's newer in terms of marketing. Is there like a set of standards? Is there a site people go to figure out rates? How does that work? Yeah, there are some sites and I don't know the URLs right offhand, but I'll definitely email them to you. There's actually marketing firms that focus on helping brands connect with influencers. Typically, so if you're an influencer, um, oftentimes there is a standard number of followers. So if you only have like a few hundred or even a few thousand, typically they're looking at like a uh, close to 100,000 and up type followers. So if you can start there as a baseline. So, and these companies want to see, you know, the number of followers, they want to see um, some of the content that's on your page. So these companies will connect the influencer with the brand. And so you want to look for those types of companies. Again, I can share some links around the companies that you want, to, that you can look into if you are interested in being an influencer and representing um, some brands. Oftentimes though, it is you building up your platform and your followers and using the right type of hashtags uh, that will attract some other brands. And these may not even be big corporate brands, but these could just be some mom and pop brands that generate a good amount of revenue um, like, for example, there's a hair care product that I use and they and I follow their Instagram and they literally put on their Instagram if we if, you know, they were looking for ambassadors, but basically influencers um, to demonstrate their products. And they put listed you needed to have this number of followers, you need to post X number of times. And so sometimes just the content that you're putting out there will attract those brands um, that will reach out to you to be an influencer. And that, you know, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. It's, it's, and I, I also wonder when people are looking to spend their money, you know, if there's, um, you know, something you can do with those influencers, you think about small businesses, their money is so precious, right? I mean, everybody's money is precious, but when you're, you know, the margins are so, can, can be slim when you're starting off. So every dollar spent is precious. And I wonder if there's an, and I don't, I don't know this myself, if there's a way to say, you know, you get paid only if you move the needle for the business. I, you know, I think it d depends on who you, the, the brand and that influencer, um, but m in general, it's usually about um, the impressions that brand will get. Uh, Sometimes, I know with the client with the hair extensions, it was about the impressions, but it was also sales, right? And so I think it does depend on the brand. Uh, one other example I can share is with one of our uh, clients. Uh, he has a, um, um, he's in one of the farmer's market and uh, that particular farmer's market, oh my gosh, I can't remember the, I think his name is King, King something, but he's like a food influencer. And so that farmer's market owner reached out to that food influencer and said, you know, hey, talk about our farmer's market. Uh, he started talking about him. The farmer's market paid for him to come out to that farmer's market for the weekend, put him up in the hotel, paid for him to come, paid all of his expenses. Uh, and he, uh, you know, did his lives from the farmer's market that day. They had so many people coming down. <laughs> during that weekend. It was just amazing. So, so, you know, don't underestimate the power of an influencer, 
because simply just bringing them to your event, bringing them to your location could be a huge boost in sales. So that expense is probably was probably well worth it. Right, exactly. Putting in the expense and then just getting everybody there, like gathering them around that sort of thing. Okay, so switching gears to, you know, small business owners and marketing, when it comes to like time blocking their schedule and figuring that out, um, sometimes, you know, hopefully when everybody's businesses are huge and successful, they're just hiring a marketing manager and the, the, they can be the creative mind behind their business or their products. And they don't have to think about marketing, but often when people are first starting, they are doing everything from taking out the garbage to cleaning the toilets to they're the chief products. everything officer. Yeah. So is is there a, a way to structure this or a way to, for people to kind of organize this to, to put time away for marketing, like you said? Yeah. But that's a tough question, Jenny. I, I will just say I struggle with that myself, but here's, here's the, the bit of hope or light at the end of the tunnel. You gotta invest in either a virtual assistant uh, you got to invest in someone who can take those administrative burdens off of your plate. And that way you, you know, if you like doing the marketing, me meaning you want to do the posting, you want to be the influencer while you're doing those things, there's still other parts of your business that has to be run. And you need to invest in getting a business, uh, a virtual assistant or invest in hiring um, a marketing firm that can do all the marketing administrative work for you. You just got to invest in that in order to um, have the time to build your followers or build your brand. Yeah, completely. It's just a, it's just a big decision each business owner has to make, right? Now, when it comes to having a virtual assistant, I have never done that myself. I know a lot of people watching probably have never done that. How does that work exactly? Well, luckily I've had six. <laughs> and uh, so there are um, organizations, uh, companies that uh, recruit um, administrative assistants to work virtually for um, companies. And so they will basically have packages. Um, you would go online and, you know, put in what you're looking for. Is it marketing, website, maintenance, help, social media, posting, um, calendar management, travel management. Uh, and then that uh, company will kind of match you up with the best VA based on the skills that you need. Um, you know, they have these VA programs where the VAs are in other countries, such as the Philippines, India. Um, so you just got to be aware that there may be a time difference. There might be a, um, a communication difference. Um, but those are the ones that are most affordable, affordable, the ones that are offshore. Um, or you can obviously have VAs that are local, um, that are here, um, but basically you sign up for a package based on the number of hours. Um, you know, their packages could range from 20 hours a month to 40 hours a month, and the price range is based on, on that. Um, you, you schedule, you know, you want to have a project meeting with them and you schedule time and share with them what they will be working on. You know, I've had, like I said, I've had six um, over several years and I've had VAs that were strictly administrative, meaning when I did presentations or leads would come into my uh, site, they would either do the follow up or or integrate them into the email, sending some emails out. I've had virtual assistants that were hybrid because they were did most of their work virtually, but when I did had on site um, in person things, they were on site helping with registration, putting out stuff. Um, so it really depends on what you need in a VA and whether that VA needs to be 100% virtual or in a hybrid situation. So 
it's so fascinating to me and i'm sure to some of the people that are watching too like how this situation works with the virtual assistant so there are you meeting with them are you saying okay this is what i need are these people that are just like infinitely wise uh, I wouldn't say infinitely wise, but they're very skilled. So um, the vert I've had ones that were completely virtual, and then maybe two of them were more hybrid, meaning they were they were locally based. And when I needed to meet with them in person for things, we they were available to do so. Uh, but all of it was via Zoom, just like this. So we'd have a weekly meeting that went over where we would go over our projects for the week or upcoming week. Um, I literally would give them access or create user profiles on my website so that they can update the content. Um, I would give them user profiles in my email um, marketing service so that they could create the, the emails, uh, the social posting uh, platforms that I used. I would give them a user profile there so that they can post. So it's really important that you interview, you do a face-to-face -face or virtual face-to-face -face interview um, because you also are giving um, this individual access. And, and, you know, if they post something that doesn't, a message that doesn't reflect your voice or your brand, the general public is not going to know that they just know that it was on your page on your profile so interview them um you know come up with a non just let them sign a non-disclosure because again they have access to proprietary information about your company and you want them to sign off on that so that they're not disclosing uh, any proprietary information or private information about your company. Yeah, yeah, you you bring up a good point. You're giving them passwords and everything like that. Okay, so that's interesting. That's one interesting like component of marketing. What do you think is the biggest mistake that people make when they embark upon a marketing plan or strategy? Well, the biggest mistake is not having one. Um, most people don't have a plan or strategy. They just say, oh, I'm going to start posting on social media. That's communicating. When you post on social media, when you create a, a reel, that's communicating. But what's the strategy or purpose behind it? Are you trying to drive traffic somewhere? Do you have a call to action, a CTA? Because um, at the end of the day, if if you're not trying to be an influencer and you're trying to build your brand, get sales, you want your audience to get into your funnel, your sales funnel. And so one of the biggest mistakes is just not having an actual strategy. So when you post something on social media, not having a call to action where you're saying, click a link or uh, visit a website. And if they get into that website and fill out a form, then now you own that content or that uh, contact rather, because the contact on that social platform, you don't own them. So you wanna get them into your funnel, whether you use a tool like HubSpot, that is a great tool. They have a free version. You can embed the forms um, on your website, you can, they have links and things that you can include in your profile bios. Uh, Linktree, that's another one that's great to create so that you can have a link in all of your social bios. And then Linktree, you can link in that platform all of your digital assets, your social profiles, your website, your YouTube, you know, all of that. So biggest, the problem is not having a plan or strategy. Heard that. Makes sense. Definitely makes sense. So hopefully that's motivating to people who are just wondering, what do I do? What do I do? Just start, right? Just get going and, and do something. So this is a little bit related to what you were talking about last week, but still something perhaps that you can speak on. Is there any sort of, uh, you know, training or information 
hub or spot that people can go to, and maybe it is the deck network, yeah. when they are trying to learn how to pitch companies to get investors. Yes, and I'm going to put this um, slide back up with the QR code, because when you scan that QR code, you're, you're basically getting into our newsletter. And then once you get into your our newsletter, you're going to be um, informed about uh, our pitch competitions, our business accelerators, of course, our events. And then we also will get you added to our, our forum where we share uh, grant information resources. So, yes, we, you, you know, there's a lot of platforms out there that you can connect to. Uh, we hope we actually had a pitch competition on May, May, we're in May. <laughs> on April 30th, we had a pitch competition. We gave out around $20,000 in cash prizes. Uh, so there's several uh, organizations in the area that offer pitch competitions and programs. I know the city of Dallas has their Dallas Accelerator program. Uh, I believe the sign up for that has already passed, but definitely go to that site. Um, and yeah, if you all want to check out the video that I did last week, I had a ton of resources in there. Uh, and, you know, I tell people, Print that out or take a screenshot and just choose one day, one hour out of the day, almost, you know, every day, just to check on e each of those resources to see how it could help you. And that is in the comments right now for those of you who are on with us live. That's the benefit of, I know a lot of people like to watch the replays on YouTube, um, but what the, the, um, I wanted to mention that the Verizon Wireless is in the chat right now. And so you can go there and then also you can obviously scan the QR code. So just lots of different, you know, lots of different opportunities for people who are out there. Now, as somebody is trying to navigate this, is there um, a, a technique when it comes to back to, you know, marketing and sort of promoting your business? Is there a technique for figuring out how much you should spend? Like, for example, like back in the day, there was a ratio of how much of your income you should spend on rent or mortgage. mortgage. Is there a like yeah, uh, percentage then, for that? You know, each, I'll just say this, each industry is different, right? Um, but typically you wanna take a percentage of your sales or estimated sales. And that percentage depends on how aggressive you want to be. The good thing is about digital uh, marketing spends, if you put in, let's just use um, Facebook or Instagram, for example. If you put in, hey, I want to reach 20,000 people, their, Facebook or Instagram is, meta is going to come back and say it's going to cost you X, right? So from using those digital, digital media, it's easy for you to kind of budget and make those estimates because you're saying, hey, you know, I want to reach X number. 10,000 people, and of those 10,000, I want to convert maybe two or three percent and you know into clients, right? And so it's a lot easier um, on those platforms. Uh, but overall, for your budget, if you on the low end, I would say 10 to 15 percent of your sales. Um, on the high end, I would say you know 20 to 30 percent. So if you're trying to be very aggressive, um, you want to you know, don't forget, there's still some traditional media out there that still actually works. So if you want to be on the aggressive end, 30%, if you're on the, the lower end, about 10% of your sales. Any last words of encouragement for people who are embarking upon this journey that you just spoke about when it comes to, you know, promoting your business? I would just say, get know your story, right? We live in a time where we can get access to information so easily. And in order for people to connect with you, um, with you or your brand, they wanna know the human side of your brand. So tell your story, be authentic, be the best authentic self, right? And show up that way consistently and constantly um, the same way. That would be my advice. Tarsha, that is incredible advice. I so appreciate you being here 
today and last week as well. So here's the thing, you guys, as we do these sessions, what this does is it creates a library of content. This is creating a free education system on YouTube from Sarah National. So this isn't just, you know, you make it on, you make it on the live or nothing else. Like if you thought this was valuable last week's session is already out on Sarah National's YouTube page. So you can go there and listen to it. What, what I do with these types of sessions, when I'm trying to absorb a lot of information is I'll, I'll press play when I'm getting ready in the morning or, you know, doing laundry or something like that. So you can like multitask and you can almost listen to this like a podcast or you can watch it to your, during your lunch break, you know, just take advantage of this information because there's some really um, meaty, solid information here and hers is up from last week. Now, if you popped in late today or just need a refresher today on what she said, it will be up on Sarah National's YouTube channel by Wednesday. So six days from today, if you don't catch it live, you have to wait six days. That's kind of the benefit for coming in live. But Tarsha, thank you so much for joining us. You are an absolute joy and you're just so, so talented and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me and you all have a good afternoon. Appreciate it. You too, Tarsha. So the website is sarah-national.org if you want to get more information or as always head to the YouTube channel and we will see you all again very soon. Bye everybody.